Hello again, back to more adventures with Nelly Chalk Ice. This story is called Nelly Chalk Ice and the Plastic Island and it carries on from Big Trouble for N Nelly Chalk Ice. Do you know what a macaroni penguin is? Maybe you aren't sure. So here is a picture. They have bright yellow feathers sticking out like shaggy eyebrows and they live in the Antarctic near the South Pole. There is one macaroni penguin who is very special. Her name is Nellie Chokice. She is the most famous penguin explorer in the world. She travelled all the way to the North Pole in the, Antar in the Arctic Ocean, which is where penguins don't live. Nellie loves her big family and they love her. Here you can see small Ma and small Pa and Grandma and Grandpa and all the brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles and cousins. Can you see Nellie's uncle? He's the one with the hat who plays the guitar. Nellie longs to get back to her family, but it's a long, long way from the North Pole to the South Pole. 12,430 miles, in fact. Luckily, Nellie has made friends with Captain Beardy Beard, who has a submarine. He and his crew are taking her back to the South Pole, but at the moment they are stuck in New York Harbour. This is because the submarine has had an accident. You see, the submarine ran out of diesel fuel and Nellie Chalk Ice made a big mistake. She thought she could help by putting lots of fish in the fuel tank. Eating fish gives penguins lots of energy to keep going. And Nellie thought that eating fish would give the submarine lots of energy too. It didn't. The fish got stuck in the engine and the submarine stopped working. Oh dear. Captain Beardy Beard was not at all happy. Luckily, the crew got all the fish out. But it took a very long, stinky time. Then the crew filled the tank with diesel and the submarine was ready to go. Nellie told, the crew told Nellie that she could press the go button to start the submarine. Unluckily, penguins can't read, not even Nellie Chalk Ice. This is because there are no books or libraries at the South Pole. So Nellie made another even bigger mistake. She didn't press the go button. She pressed the button that said torpedoes. Zap! A torpedo shot out of the submarine. The torpedo went whizzing across the bay and hit the Statue of Liberty. There was a loud bang. And the statue's arm fell off. It was the arm holding the flaming torch. Biggest splash ever. Oh dear, again. Captain Beardy Beard was very upset. Nelly, you... But the captain could only think of rude words to say, so he hid them in his beard where no one could hear them. I think we'd better get... It. I think we'd better get out of here fast, he told the crew. The submarine sailed underwater and all week until Captain Beardy Beard thought it was time to come up to the surface again. The submarine rose up and up, and just as it broke through the surface, there was a terrible grinding noise. The engine grunted to a halt, and the submarine stopped dead. Oh dear, at least it wasn't Nellie's fault this time. They all looked at each other in alarm. What had happened? Captain Beardy Beard climbed the ladder into the tower with Nellie close behind. The captain opened a hatch slowly and peered out. They were just above the level of the sea. They stared out in horror. Nellie's bright yellow eyebrows went very droopy. All around the submarine, floating, was an island of plastic. In every direction. It came in all sizes, shapes and colours, covered with filthy scum. The plastic bobbed softly up and down on the waves. The island of plastic stretched as far as the eye could see. Captain Beardy Beard rubbed his eyes. I don't believe it, he said. What a filthy, disgusting disaster. One by one, the crew came up to the ladder to have a look. Oh dear, they all said. And this time, Nellie hadn't even done anything. 
It's a catastrophe, moaned Nellie. Now we are stuck in the middle of a disgusting plastic island and the submarine has broken down. I don't think I shall ever see my family again. At that moment, Nellie spotted something far off in the middle of the island. It was like a white flag or an arm and it was waving feebly. Look, someone needs our help, she said. We must rescue them. Nellie was right, but the captain was worried. We can't stand on all this wobbly plastic, he told her. It's not safe. We will fall underwater and get trapped. I'll go and see what it is, Nellie said bravely. Doesn't matter if I fall in, because I'm a penguin and I can swim. You be careful, Nellie warned. You be careful, Nellie, warned Captain Beardy Beard. Don't take any risks. Nellie jumped onto the wobbling island. She hopped from one piece of floating plastic to the next. A few times she almost fell in, but she kept going. That made her feel clever and proud until she really did fall in and it was horrible. The plastic was everywhere, trying to pull her down. Nellie was sinking underneath it all. Luckily, macaroni penguins can hold their breath for a long time, about 20 minutes. Nellie had to work really hard to clamber on top. Nellie didn't feel clever any longer. This plastic disaster is far, far worse than I thought, Nellie muttered to herself. At last she could see what was waving. It was the wing of a big bird, an albatross. The bird's feet and one wing were caught up in plastic netting. The albatross was thin and hungry. It must have been trapped there for days. Every so often the albatross tried to break free. I'm Nellie. How did you get trapped? asked Nellie, the penguin explorer. My name is Toss, the albatross answered. Friends told me about this plastic island. I flew down to see it myself and when I landed my foot got trapped, then the other foot, then one wing. It's awful, horrible. Who threw all this rubbish into the ocean? I've seen hundreds of dead fish. I've even seen a dead whale. The plastic is killing everything. Nellie pulled and tugged at the twisted netting and the albatross broke free at last, but he was too weak to fly. Climb onto my back, said Nellie. I'll carry you to our submarine. What's a submarine? asked Toss, as Nellie plodded step by step towards the distant submarine. It's a thing that goes underwater, Nellie explained. Like a fish? Hmm, a very big fish, said Nellie, but you climb inside it. You climb inside a big fish, exclaimed Toss. I put fish inside me. I don't want to get inside a big fish. It's like a fish, said Nellie, but it's a submarine. That's what you said at the beginning, the albatross complained. I still don't know what a submarine is. Captain Beardy Beard and the crew helped Nellie and the albatross onto the deck. They went inside the submarine. This isn't like a fish at all, snapped the albatross, looking all around. That annoyed Nellie. Excuse me, Toss, I just saved your life and now you're complaining. Maybe I should put you back on the plastic island. I might add, you're very heavy. I shall need a back massage after carrying you all that way. Then Toss started grumbling and said thank you. He held up one big paddle-shaped foot and said, actually... I have very good feet for giving a back massage if anyone's interested. But first of all, I'd like a cup of coffee and a biscuit. The crew gave Toss some food and afterwards he gave Nellie a nice back massage and Captain Beardy Beard too. They talked about the plastic island and what they should do. It's an ocean calamity, said Nellie. It stretches for miles. Toss says that hundreds of animals have been affected Fish, whales, dolphins, birds? Toss nodded. What's even worse is that the island stretches much further than you can see. Plastic, plastic, plastic. What are people doing to the ocean? Well, we can't all just pick it all up, said the captain. And we can't go anywhere yet because the submarine's propeller is tangled up in it. I can't send a diver to sort it out because the diver might get trapped. I think we might be stuck here forever. And there's the propeller all caught up with the plastic. I shall read the rest later. Bye.